We play. We fight. We conquer. Welcome to the Freak Show. I am your host today, Bumpy McSquiggums, and we are diving in. We're checking out Eden's Last Sunrise. It just came out today. This has been on my kind of follow along on a Twitter list for a while, and I was like, oh, oh God, it's out. And uh, sure enough, and thankfully enough, uh, the developer, I was able to reach out and request a copy of the game, and they sent it my way. So big shout out and thank you to Sungazer Software LLC and uh, Keymailer for hooking me up with the code for this means a lot and i am eager to dive in and check it out it's it's been a little bit of time so let's see how this goes okay new game uh it looks like it has some controller support but it's you move the, the cursor along with the analog stick and i i would rather just try keyboard and mouse for this one so that's what i'm going to be using welcome to eden's last sunrise 200 years ago, civilization was at its height. A group of individuals turned their sights on the stars and developed the planet's first space program. A group of 1,000 volunteers blasted off the surface, leaving their home world behind to colonize the solar system. But the surface dwellers began to resent those who left, accusing them of abandoning the magic-rich promised land gifted to them by the deified forces. Over time, communication between the two groups was cut off, and the dwellers began to shun technology and regress to their old, magic-favoring ways. Now, 200 years later, the spacefarers have suddenly returned, bringing dire news about the fate of the entire world. You are not about to embark on a mission to save the world. No, its fate has already been sealed. Instead, your actions will change the fate of the people and usher them into a new world, either by choice or by force. Interesting premise. Every decision you make, whether it be a world-altering proclamation or a secret told confidentially to a friend, will be your own. There are no right or wrong answers. Boy, you've never met me, have you? <laughs> your first decision is always an important one and must be made right away. You must decide which side of the story you wish to represent, the surface dwellers or the spacefarers. Your starting side will affect many available allies and potential story paths available. Choose the faction you wish to represent now. Oh, goody. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So we have cool lizard man. We have little, little dog, little dog bro. We got big... I, I don't know what that's supposed to be. Cowman, maybe? And and cat dude or, or cat girl. I, I can't tell. It's fine. Um, who are these? Ah, the Dwellers. Play as a Dweller faction, a native inhabitant of the planet. You have a natural affinity for magic and low-tech classes. Or the Spacefarers. Play as the Spacefarer faction. As Space Station colonists, you are familiar with advanced technology and weapons. Uh, now look, I, I, I like both of the, these as options here, but I, I'm going to go with my magic boys. All right, a little low tech, a little magic. I think it's going to be okay. You are a surface dweller, a resident living on the Grand Continent. The Grand Continental leadership called upon you for your tactical prowess in regards to a secret meeting concerning the spacefarers. If it's true, then it will be the first contact of the spacefarers in over two hundred years first however you will need to create a representation of yourself in the story this is your presence in the world you will oversee battles take part in story segments and earn the trust of your allies as the commander of the cradle project good luck commander all right i'm gonna be you know what let's just let's just let's get out of the way i don't think my name's gonna fit Oh, it does. Oh, beautiful. Shout out to the developers for making that just enough. He is my friend. I am with him. I am his friend. It looks like you got genders, she, her. And then you can customize it if you wanted to. Oh, there you go. A little bit of inclusion. Uh, attitude. Formal, casual, smug. <laughs> Choose your attitude. Honestly, I'd probably be casual, but uh, I kind of want to go smug, but nah, we'll go casual. Now, Bumpy, you control the fate of the people. 
cooperate with the other side, or fight to protect your way of life. The choice is yours. Kind of felt like I could have read that whole thing with the, the deep, you know, crazy voice. Oh my gosh. We're just like right into the, the city here. This is Sunbreak, the capital city of the nation of... All right, we're, we're, we're fine. Uh, Dulier. Dulier. And the largest city on the Grand Continent. It, or sorry, in the city sits the Grand Continental Leadership headed by President Sorensen Ashfall. Sorensen has presided over the Grand Continent since his election three years ago. Life has been easy, if uneventful, for the people of Sunbreak. Built on the ruins of the old monarchy, the nation enjoys unprecedented wealth and has overseen decades of global peace. Until today, the world is about to change forever. Oh no! A rush of wind and heat blows through the city's corridors. The citizens loosely gather together in a panic. What was that? A meteor? Don't know. It landed somewhere nearby. I bet it's the betrayer's doing. Are we under attack? S someone alert the president. El Presidente. The warmth of fading light. I like that, that we get to see the names or the, the soundtrack songs. That's pretty cool. Not something you see normally. It's, it's pretty neat. Sunbreak, capital of the Grand Continent. The presidential office. The next day, early in the morning. Early in the morning. Uh, you've been summoned along with a few of the president's most trusted advisors to discuss the explosion outside Sunbreak yesterday. It seems the guard patrol who investigated it has returned with important news. It's not enough. We need more decorations. Add a few planters and some green wing vines on the shelves. They will like that. And have the rugs cleaned as soon as we leave. Sorry, everyone. I'm, uh, I'm ready to begin. <laughs> Why are we fussing over decorations? Are, are we expecting someone important, like another envoy from Ekrit? Uh, Dracorin wouldn't care about foliage. And this is something else. Eh, we'll get to that shortly. First, we have a couple of new faces joining us today. I think we should introduce ourselves. Sorensen straightens up his chair and clears his throat as he looks straight at you. Seems like he wants to impress you. Is this your first time visiting GCL offices, Bumpy? I am Sorensen Ashfall, as you are aware, and these are my assistants, Ref, uh, Reflin and Jess. They will help you get settled in and show you the resources you'll have available going forward. Reflin, Jess, this is Bumpy McSquiggums. He will be acting as our tactical commanders over the coming weeks. That means during engagements, you will do whatever he says. Understood. Huh? Tactical engagements? What? Are, are we at war, Mr. President? Don't know yet. Sounds more like a precaution. Jess uh, Kalana, I'll keep you safe. Oh, right. Uh, Reflin uh, Farborn. Uh, leave all the paperwork to me. <laughs> After a short pause, the older Carnivan... At the end of the table, clears his throat and shyly tents his thick fingers together. That's my cue, huh? I'm Kesh Elkara. I teach history at the Academy up the street. I use the archives here sometimes, so I got a bit of a rapport with the president, you know? Nice to meet you guys. Gotta admit, I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing here. The president made it sound real important, though, so... It's time for you to say something. Many times, your responses can affect the trust of your allies. If they like what they hear, silence is always an option as well. You should introduce yourself, too. It's not important. Let's get this meeting started already. Bumpy, it's nice to meet you all. Just call me Commander, and we'll get along just fine. Yeah. The other attendees appreciate your straightforward response. Yeah, they do. Being a tactical commander is an intimidating profession, after all. Very good. Let us continue. We have much to discuss. Sorensen briefly glances over to the window and then to the small door as if to make sure both are shut securely. He gives a small nod to the soldier standing guard and then leans forward and rests his elbows on the tabletop. I love, I love the, sorry, I, I really like the, the soundtrack being displayed. This small thing, I, I don't know why it makes me so happy, it just does. 
You are all no doubt aware of the explosion outside Sunbreak that was witnessed yesterday. Thankfully, no one was harmed, and there was very little damage at the spot where it landed. We think it was meant to get our attention. So it wasn't a meteor. Oh man, guess I lost that bit. The guard patrol investigated and returned with their findings late last night. It is no meteorite. So what the heck was it? At the presumed impact site, our patrol captain discovered a device. It is made of metal and houses technology not known to the people of the Grand Continent. We believe it to be of spacefarer origin. Spacefarers, huh? It's been a minute. I imagine what they'd want with us now. Oh, wait, 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 okay. Hang on. The space program from like a hundred years ago? I always heard that ended in disaster. That they all died out. Two hundred years, actually, and we don't know what happened to them. Good thing you got a historian here, huh? Yeah, he's, he's very smug and, and self important right now. That's precisely why I requested your expertise on the matter. Professor Alcara, because it gets more interesting. The device displays words and numbers on one side in Delorean language. The numbers appear to be a countdown. Sounds like a warning. Eh, I don't like it. Or a trick, but what do we do? I mean, did you see the size of that explosion yesterday? I think that's exactly why it's not a threat. Historically, you shoot first and sort out the details later. You don't send a message and give the enemy time to prepare. Well, like you said, I think it was meant to get our attention. And the countdown is for... something? How long until it reaches zero, Mr. President? Yeah, I'm glad you agree, because the countdown ends tomorrow. And do you want us to take a little field trip and be there when it does? Precisely. This is a historic opportunity for the leadership. If I'm on location to make first contact with the spacefarers after 200 years, well, the campaign slogans for the next election will essentially write themselves. So you plan to be there in person when the countdown ends. And I'll have the guards set up a cordon around the site to keep the public from snooping around. Oh, no, no. On the contrary, I want this to be a public event. There is no time to arrange transportation or print any announcement sheets. But anyone in Sunbreak is welcome to follow the presidential caravan and watch for themselves. Then why is the tactical commander here? All eyes fall upon you, with equal parts curiosity and suspicion. Eh, a precaution. It will be a large, disorganized crowd, and Bumpy scored well on the aptitude tests. Yeah, I did. We need someone on hand that can keep their cool, just in case. Ah, so you want to bring them here. That explains the decorations and the secrecy. Um, can we come too, Mr. President? Yes, I want you all to attend. Professor Alcaro. You are invited to attend and bring your students as well. Yeah, I'll come, sure, but I think I'll leave the kids here. Otherwise, you're going to need two commanders to keep them all in line. Hey, <laughs> it wouldn't be much of a historian if I missed out on actual history being made. I'll just watch from the crowd, if that's all right. I mean, that seems silly. All right, that's all for now. I will make a brief announcement and begin coordinating the caravan. The countdown will expire around noon, so we need to be in place at the site by mid-morning. Should I let Dr. Kalembi know, too? He might want to come with. If you want, but I doubt even something like this would get him to leave that lab of his. He is invited, too, of course. All members of the GCL are welcome to attend. Oh, Bumpy, before we adjourn, we have set up a personal living space for you in Sunbreak. Close to this office, Reflin will guide you to your room and bring you anything you may need. Welcome to the team, Commander. Good luck, Commander. It appears your first day of work with the GCL will be an important one. You decide to retire early. Prepare for the arrival of the spacefarers on the morrow. Okay. That was kind of weird, but I didn't dislike it. The next day in an undeveloped forest to the southwest of Sunbreak, the strange device sits in its clearing, blinking silently and ominously. You have accompanied the president's entourage with, or along with a small crowd of curious spectators who are wisely keeping their distance at the bottom of the hill. Well, I finished my sweep. The crowd looks clean. Thank you, Jess. It's a small crowd, but sufficient. Perhaps we're fortunate that we were so pressed for time. 
I see some of the Black River survivors in the crowd. I recognize Alicia, and she's probably got more scouts watching. I assume the survivors would show up for this. I hope they don't cause any trouble. What about the Union? The leader hasn't made a statement yet. It's hard to tell them apart from regular citizens. However, we checked everyone for weapons. Came up with nothing. Alcara was carrying a magic focus, but I let him keep it. Very good. There is less than one minute remaining on the countdown. If there was going to be a disruption, surely it would have shown itself by now. I want my first words of the space fair is to be meaningful, so let me take the lead. All right, man, whatever. The crowd collectively holds its breath as the final seconds tick down. The tension is as thick as a brick. The strange device emits a final few flashes. And then... That's it? N nothing? Nothing happened? What gives? Look up at the sky. Something's coming. Everyone, stand back. A hurricane's coming. Th no, okay. Sorry. <laughs> oh, they, they killed a guy. Its head's in the thing. That's pretty massively huge. What if it landed the other way and killed all the people? Let's not even worry about that. A spectacular craft alights on the ground and settles itself like a huge golden bird roosting among the trees. This must be what the spacefarers use to travel around. <laughs> Oh, oh my. What's up? Welcome home. I see you received our message. My name is Willis Jameson. We are the ambassadors for the spacefaring leadership. Spacefaring leadership. Sorensen tenses up and stands in silence for a minute as if the weight of the realization is settling in. He is too stunned to speak. Ah, uh, of course. I am Sorensen Ashfall. President of the Grand Continental Leadership. These are my assistants, Rufflin and Jess. Quite the crowd has gathered, I see. Yes, but it is not unexpected. This is a historic moment for both of our worlds. After all, perhaps we should go someplace quieter where we can speak in peace. Betrayers! Oh, it's about to crack some... Oh my god, what the heck was that, man? Defend your home! Drive them from our soil! Unsurprisingly... That was incredible. Unsurprisingly, the crowd quickly disperses, leaving only the attackers and a few other civilians behind. How, how did they... Sorensen, what's the meaning of this? Dude, do they have a Molotov? Like, what is happening? Head for the lander. We'll cover you. Mr. President, we'll help too. Can I, can I do my thing now? Oh boy, this got out of hand in record time. I ought to help slow him down if I can. Didn't expect this kind of response so soon. I better do something. Oh, we about to do something. Maybe. For a home to return to. Defeat all enemies. Ah, yeah. Oh, here we are. We got we got Cash and Belitza. Okay. What, what are, what are the... You know, no. Rufflin. Oh, oh. Oh, you bring them. Oh, okay. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah. All right, let's do this thing. You're the president's commander? Let us help. Guest characters like me will move and fight on our own. We will help your party fight off any enemy units nearby. We get a chance to direct any or direct your ally units soon. All right, go ahead, think. Snapshot, okay. <laughs> she just shot that person. Watch your positions. Take the high ground and attack from behind or from the side if you can, and keep vulnerable folks like me out of the danger zone. Danger zone. You're gonna hit her with a tranquilizer after she just got shot? That's not very nice. <laughs> now she's pooping or something. I don't know. She's doing mind and body, baby. A few things of note. HP is health. Units who lose all their HP 
will be removed from the battle. SP means special points. Turn. It powers many special skills. Unit regains some SP at the start of their turn. Oh, now she's gonna get shot again. It's not gonna go well for her. Oh, nope, somebody else. Oh, endurance disruption. And finally, yeah. You wanna fight? You'll need action points. AP. Your turn ends when you run out. Or if you wanna bail early, leftover AP will make your next turn come up soon. You gonna go karate chop some dude in the face? There you are. Staggering strike. You're gonna stab him in the face. Yeah. Well, I'll slash him, I guess. Oh no, you're gonna subdue the cat, or the, no, the cat's gonna subdue you. My class is the journeyman. I can do a little bit of everything. Fighting, magic, healing, you name it. Right now, you should send me in to fight up close. Or over to an ally to heal them if needed. What's my next move? I don't know. But the voice was pretty loud there. I should probably turn that down a little bit. It's okay. Choose the move. Uh, center camera. Can I... Okay, move with the WASD. Very nice. All right, so we'll move. Over, over pooping, here? Over to the pooping one, yes. Uh, journeyman actions. Exposing strike for quick pickup. Uh, ally, okay. So, exposing strike, obviously. I can, I can hit her with my wooden rod, the 20 power, accuracy of 95, or I can hit her with my bare hands, the 17 power and accuracy of 105. We'll, we'll hit her with a stick. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! You've been exposed. All right, end turn. The unit has at least two AP left, they can defend. Okay, uh, defend and end turn. Wait, 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 hold on. Uh, can I? Okay, never mind. It's fine. I was wondering if I could attack again. I, I didn't look for the uh, the AP there. My class is a flight blade. I'm fast, agile, and good at both melee and ranged attacks. I can do a lot of damage, especially from behind. Just keep me out of harm's way if you can. Oh, well, well. <laughs> well, well. I mean, well, here I go. Beyond. All right, uh, flighty actions. We've got sneak attack. Special as opponent's damage from behind does not trigger reaction skill or true shot. That's a ranged skill. A precise long distance ranged attack does not trigger reactions, can inflict disabled pain for one turn. Okay, interesting. Lead missiles? What? <laughs> <laughs> Bit underwhelming. Oh, I can, I can go again. Yeah. Double strike. My combat class is the Sun Spell. That's like an offensive elemental magic user. Keep me away from enemies and let me sling spells from a distance. I could use fire and ice right now. If you want to see what an enemy's weak to, click on that unit to bring up their portrait, then click on the portrait for a full stat breakdown. These guys are resistant to heat, but cold on the other hand. Now, pay attention. Alright. Well, if it's so say say we wanted to do that, right? Okay. So, minus fifty the cold resist okay, that's cool. Uh action. And sun, and we want to hit him with cold snap, which you can absolutely do. Yeah! Everybody, ah! holy crap. Okay, sorry. Everybody, chill. All right, can't do it from there. Can I move a little closer? I can do that. I can do that. Mm -hmm. Boy, boy, how did I tell you? Condensed mana? What does that mean? Encoding an energized mana that can be inhaled or applied restores 10 SP. Is that, is that a skill or is that a... It's fine. My class is a bodyguard. I guard bodies. Let me fight up close with melee attacks. 
I can also draw enemies into attacking me with a lure status by using my on the offense skill. I'm up. Moving out. All right, just see what you got. <laughs> oh my god, that was incredible. <laughs> On the offense, bring it. We're ready. What does this do exactly? I have a hundred percent accuracy from here. Take control of an engagement, major lure, and more accurate reaction attacks for three turns. Okay. So we will uh, go ahead and we will end the turn. Let's see what you got. Okay. Do we have a way of countering that? <laughs> we do not, which is okay. Come on over. Oh, you don't want to play with me? But I had the thing on me. Oh, he's gonna Molotov me. <laughs> or not do that. All right, looks like our allies will probably do the cleanup hitting now. <laughs> Get him, Marie. Pulls <laughs> out her gat and pops him. So, bat. Rami the medic. You gonna hit him with the tranquilizer? Might be enough. <laughs> I didn't look at the HP in the bottom right. I could have. He's gonna be down to like two or three, right? You're gonna get God here. Three. Yeah, three HP. Yeah, <laughs> good day, sir. You got obliterated. Your team has vanquished the last of the attackers. With the help of the newly arrived spacefarers and their advanced technology, slowly your group is, uh, assembles at the base of the lander craft once again. We are victorious as the dust settles. What, do you surprise? This old Vin still got some fight left in him. All right, we got Cash, Reflin, Jess, and Balitza. We got uh, 22 AP to spend. Or we spent 22 AP. Uh, it took us 8 minutes, 38 seconds. Okay. I'm here for that. What are the... Okay, skill growth. Technology, power, nature. Forces, discipline, and science. And then class mastery. Interesting stuff. I like it. Got a little thermal dust. We got some funds. Beacon Point Landing Zone, the area has been cleared except for the President's Entourage and the Spacefarers. Well, I knew our reception would be interesting, but I wasn't expecting anything like that. I must apologize. We assumed there would be resentment over your visit, but we didn't do our due diligence in securing the meeting point. This is all my fault. No, no, we discussed the chance of some blad bud, uh, yeah, bad blood or blad, blad bud, maybe? I don't know. Bad blood awaiting on our arrival. Thankfully, we were prepared. Although, I imagine news of what happened here has probably spread across the entire continent by now. Hmm? Yeah, that seems impossible. The couriers would take a week to cross the continent at a minimum. Couriers? You mean you have no aircraft or wireless transmission of any sort? I see. Those weapons they used were something else, though. Was that some kind of magical fire? That was no magic. If we can recover some samples, I can assign our head GCL chemist to try to identify the kind of explosive material used. I hate to postpone your reason for being here, but we could really use your help. Oh, we knew these attackers posed a threat, but we were sure that we had the rendezvous point locked down. We can't let them continue to run rampant like this. It makes Grand Continental Leadership look weak. Very well, we'll hear you out. Thank you. We'll be grateful for any aid you can provide. Let us move to the GCL headquarters in Sunbreak and speak in private. We can also house your team in the city if desired. Dr. Kalestal? Sure. Kalestal? Enforcer Dara, thank you for your assistance. You're free to join us in Sunbreak as well. 
I will be accompanying Marie and Rami, or Rami, or Ramai, as head of the Cradle Project, but your input will be highly valuable to us. Flame Day Week 1, Operation Underway, the fate of acceptance. I appreciate the offer, however, I've been tasked to record data routinely on the planet's surface. Sure. Wireless transmission is difficult due to interference on the planet's surface, thus I must tend to them in person. Yeah, and I guess I'm running security for this knucklehead here while he does his thing. I'd love to catch up with y'all later, though. Until then, take care of yourself, Marie. Good job opping up those insurgents, you guys. That could have gone real bad for us. Luckily, the president didn't get hurt, and it looks like the spacefarers didn't get the wrong idea about us. Got it as well, Big Squiggums. I apologize for doubting you before. Your ability to coordinate a mismatched group of combatants was admittedly impressive. Yeah, it was. Yeah, speaking of which, who are you again? Everyone turns to look at ex the exotically dressed woman who helped out in the battle. Her smile doesn't drop for even an instant. Who, me? Yeah, I guess we haven't, been met, uh, we haven't met properly. My name is Falitza Sunswept, Volunteer Guard Division. They put me in the crowd to keep an eye on the civilians. Check your paperwork. I'm supposed to be here. Huh? Yeah. Yep. Your name's here on the guard detail. Weird. Well, anyway, good job to you, too. I guess you ought to join us back at, in Sunbreak, too. I got a feeling the president's going to want to discuss what happened here. Nice to meet you all, too. Of course I'll come back with you. I managed to sneak all these knives in with me without your guys noticing, after all. Now your guards could use some tips. Hmm. She's kind of pooped on our guards, huh? That's not nice. Sunbreak, capital of the Grand Continent, the presidential office. President Ashfall hurriedly brings the spacefarers inside without attention from the civilians in the city gates. This is our headquarters. We oversee all the goings on of the Grand Continent from here. Please make yourselves comfortable. Do you like the plans? Um, do, do spacefarers even have plans? We do. The original colonists carried seeds of several native species into space. 200 years ago. So our flora are descendants of those. I assure you, our lives are more similar than you may think. Well, I know you didn't come all this way to discuss plans. Please, tell us why you've chosen to return. You can speak candidly with me. As a president, I have the means to control the message when it reaches the general public. Well, you see, we live in an interest, or we live in interesting times, President Ashfall. The Cradle Project was established to rekindle our connection with the surface dwellers. Our people have been divided for far too long. Cradle Project, an interesting name. Yes, I like the sound of it. The birth of a new relationship between our peoples. Allow us to formally integrate ourselves with this Cradle Project. Well... I assume there is more to it than that. After all, we wouldn't expect you to return to us if you were bearing good news. If you wish to aid the people of the Grand Continent in some way, then it is leadership's duty to, uh, to assist you. Uh, it is nothing serious. Let us call it growing pains for both of our societies. There is no cause for immediate alarm. I feel like that's not true. Those attackers, they were ready for us. It's like they've been planning for this day for a long time. Who are they and how did they... And how did you know to expect them? Well, they call themselves the One World Union. The OWU. You may know, or may not, that some people have somewhat of a grudge against the travelers who left our world. They say you abandoned the land, and the forces, and the people who were left behind. The One World Union was originally a philosophy to give comfort to those people, to say that they were better off without the travelers. Over time, though, the sentiment has turned into something else. Something else? I don't know about that. Sounds exactly like what they meant all along. It's fair. Well, thankfully, they've had no way to actually act before now, so their operations are still scattered. This is a weakness for them, but it can also be a liability for us. That is why I wish to ask for your help. I take full responsibility, Ashfall. Their weapons eluded our searches and put you in harm's way. Well, yeah, I think we all blame you this time. I told you we shouldn't have let anybody get that close, didn't I tell you? None of our staff are to blame. The weapons they had appeared to be innocuous bottles. 
that caught us all off guard. So I have our chemical specialist analyzing some of the charred soil to see if he can identify the materials that was used in the attack. That miasmatist? You're trusting him with our safety now? Well, that's his job. He has promised to have results for us by the end of the week. Hey, uh, why not let us analyze it? We've got organic scanning technology. We'd have the answer for you in like an hour. No, not necessarily. Let our people handle it. Plus, we can't let news of an attack reach the other spacefarer factions. Dr. Ransend, our mission would be uh, over before it's even begun. Our best move would be to quell this little uprising before it gets out of hand ourselves, and then continue our original purpose. We have an idea about where this group of assailants could be hiding out. It would have to be within a day's travel of our contact point away from Sunbreak proper. I believe they've gathered in the Fertile Quarter, the region of the farmland surrounding Sunbreak. Wide open spaces and plenty of abandoned structures where they could plan their operations in secret. I would like our squad to aid in your investigation. It will give us a chance to learn the lay of the land and measure what sort of threat these challengers pose and whether we need additional resources or personnel to resist them. Um, Mr. President, a quick word. Are you sure that's a good idea? The One World Union kind of has a lot of support across the continent. Hunting them down like this means the GCL is going to be taking a stand against them. Yes, I'm aware. The GCL has tolerated the Union's operations for years, but they have never taken an aggressive action like this before. We have to demonstrate that the GCL will not allow violence against any civilians, whether they be DeLorean citizens or spacefarers. We must affirm that we have the citizens' best interest in mind. We must demonstrate our ability to cooperate with spacefarers and our willingness to stop any who oppose that cooperation. This is an unprecedented opportunity for you as well, Bumpy. It's me. He's talking to me. Uh, the spacefarers could bring us tactics and technology beyond our wildest dreams. I'll be trusting you to ensure such power is wielded wisely. Boy, you don't know me very well. I, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, right, right on, Prez. It's true. Those Union guys kind of overstepped their bounds. They attacked you guys with forces know what, completely unprovoked. Kind of hard to look sympathetic after pulling off a stunt like that. The professor's right. Getting to see the spacefarers firsthand and up close, truly awe-inspiring. But seeing our own citizens immediately attacking for no reason, way to ruin the moment. That's why I've decided I want to be pulled off guard duty so I can work with you guys directly. The Cradle Project, right? I want to sign up for that, too. Uh, it seems like I'm not in a position to turn down willing help. If the One World Union plans to or plans to increase their disruption campaign, then our guards will have their hands full as it is. Having more soldiers under Bumpy's direct control will help us operate independently. Yeah! Thank you for the... Ooh, that's real loud. Thank you, Felitza. We'll offer you support, too. It will be the best if we're not involved in a firefight directly, at least. Not yet. Well, we'll let you use our lander craft. It can take you anywhere on the planet's surface in no time flat. This is awfully sudden, isn't it? What do you think about all this, Commander? Do you feel all right with commanding the Cradle Project? Sure. Hopefully it's just one operation against the Union. That's why I signed up. I'm ready to roll. What do you think spacefarers think about this? Or what do the spacefarers think about this? Um... It looks like we're already involved regardless. They targeted us specifically after all. We'll let your commander call the shots and we'll provide support where we can. That's right. We will do our best to keep your combat experiences minimal. The Union is the GCL's problem and our squad will handle it appropriately. Alright. I, I don't know if this game has like autosave or what's going on. But uh, we've definitely run over the time allotted for our first episode. We'll, we'll stick with it. It appears that we're all on the same page. Very good. A small operation like this will be helpful in gauging our respective abilities. Then let's not waste any more time. The GCL's logistics department is just down the hall. Commander McSquiggums, join me for a moment so I can give you the basics of operating on the Grand Continent. Okay. I'm ready for it. I think we're... Yeah, there, see, I see a save thing flashing. Here we are, Bumpy. The Grand Continent. Sunbreak to the north and the Delure region. Uh, Evendas to the west and 
Ekret in the mountains to the east. Our logistics agency has divided the continent into regions. As you can see, we treat each as a separate territory. Before now, the GCL's presence across the continent has been fragmented. Their help bumping, we can solidify our control. Each region will provide us with resources once we've liberated it and set up official trade channels. Liberating these regions will also let us extend our routes into neighboring areas. This infrastructure will be extremely important. First though, we must find and route those attackers from the Fertile Quarter. So these are the large glowing region near Sunbreak. You can select that region to see any orders specific to that location. You can also see all orders in the list to the right. For now, let's engage with that order. Go ahead and choose it from the list of dispatched missions. All right, looks like I can actually save. I can. All right, guys and gals, that's going to be where we break off this very first episode. I say a lot of story, a lot of uh, building the setting, uh, introducing the characters, and explaining what's going on. I'm here for it. I'm, I might tweak some of the sounds a little bit here and there. But, uh, yeah, very cool. A lot to the game. A lot more than um, you might think at first glance. I always find it interesting when you get into a game versus when you see, like, screenshots and things of that nature. Uh, and you guys know, uh, if you've been around the channel for any length of time, I tend to be like, oh, that looks cool, and then I ignore everything about it. Just kind of checking, like, oh, oh, the release date's coming soon. Like, that's usually the only thing I really check in on. I, I try not to see any trailers. I try not to see any gameplay. I, I try not to play demos or any of that stuff. Maybe a little bit of early access play, but I keep that to a minimum. And then when the game's fully out, that's when I dive in with both feet and I immerse myself in the game and I enjoy it. And I give you guys that 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 real, genuine first look, first hands-on experience. And you guys get to come along on the ride for that. So hopefully you all appreciate that and hopefully that's something you guys enjoy. Uh, game, like I said, it doesn't look as deep or impressive uh, just looking at the screenshots, but... Anytime there's a tactical turn-based strategy game or an SRPG out there, uh, I always want to give it a shot. Uh, it's the heart and soul of what we do here at The Freak Show. We cover stuff from AAA to indie and everything in between. So it's just a celebration of gaming and just a good time. So again, a big shout-out and a thank you to Sungazer Software LLC and Keymailer for hooking me up with the code for this. I do appreciate it. I am looking forward to more. If you guys want more information about the game, where to get the game, information on the developer, or any of that stuff down below in the description of the video. I'll have various links for you guys. And until the very next episode, like, subscribe, share, do all the YouTube stuff. I won't bug you again in this series. Um, I've been your host, Bumpy McSquiggums. Thanks for stopping by the Freak Show. We play, we fight, we conquer.